Samantha Chang, the executive producer of the Heritage Series based out of Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. So you are here to embark upon a research project looking into the history of the congressman uh, on Guam. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what is this project and what's the significance behind it? Okay, well the project is called Reflections of Asian Pacific American Members of Congress. It I partner with the United States Capitol Historical Society. And we, I'm here in Guam as a guest of the university, mm -hmm. so I can access their incredible archive of congressional papers from the first member to serve Guam, Mr. Juan Pat, okay. all the way through um, Congressman Underwood, which is now being processed through the group, through, Mark, through the Mark Center. Wow, what started this um, this effort? Well, this is the decade of Asian Pacific Americans. Okay. I believe. And it's very important that we capture the oral history of where we came from. We have an opportunity now through technology that allows us to create these incredible archives and create a public record of Asian Pacific Americans' participation in American history, mm -hmm. of which it's quite significant and substantial. The reason why I'm here in Guam is people don't realize that Guam is an American territory. They actually sure don't really know where it is. <laughs> that too. <laughs> so there, it is not just of strategic importance, mm -hmm. but there's a tremendous amount of history and how Guam is recognized as a territory and its people as an American citizen through the Organic Act, which was crafted by Juan mm -hmm. Pat. You as an American citizen, because you were born after 1950, are automatically a citizen because of what Juan Pat did. You can vote if you decide to move to the mainland automatically. You don't have to do anything else but right. be who you are. You can't vote here because here. No, you're um, here. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You don't pay any taxes here. But if you lived on the mainland, you pay taxes there, and you have the right to vote. That's pretty significant. Yeah. That's very significant. There's only one other place in the world in the, that's part of the United States that has that opportunity, which is the U.S. Virgin Islands. Okay. So what makes my visit so important is that here at the Mark Center is this amazing collection of material that has been gifted to this community and is allowing researchers such as myself to come and find out more about this person, more about how this person thought, mm -hmm. how it affected the people of Guam, and how the people of Guam received him. This gives us an opportunity to have a public record of this, and it's not just focused in Guam. What will happen with my work is it will go out on the United States Capitol Historical Society's website. A learning guide will be created and disseminated for all who ask. This is, will be all public domain information. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing about this is that a precedence has been set that the United States Library of Congress is going to acquire the finished material. So. What, what's next for your project, and how soon will it, will it be published? Well, this actually, Mr. Wompat, is part of phase three. Okay. And I am working on phase two, but I figured I'm here. <laughs> Let's see what's out here. Go and a little ahead of the curve. Go a little ahead of the curve, because it is so far away from the mainland. Um, so I'm going to head out to interview Congressman Sablon okay. from the Northern Marianas. When I was in Honolulu, I interviewed Congresswoman Psyche mm -hmm. and um, collect and working at the University of Hawaii at the Manoa, camp Man Manoa mm -hmm. campus. And uh, that's been a phenomenal resource. So this is my favorite part of a project. It's like being on a treasure hunt. The goal of my programs is to create programs that will encourage a young person to ask a question okay. or to go, aha, I didn't know that, and give a sense of pride, not just to APAs, but to Americans in general. Mm -hmm. 
you know. We all need to feel very proud that we are part of this legislative process and that we are afforded these opportunities. So I'm just very thankful to be here and I thank the president of the university for extending the ground support. I, I really truly thank the people at Mark. They have been absolute rock stars. Right. <laughs> every day is a gift. I come here, I've been here every day this week and I learned something new and it, it's just so rewarding and so fulfilling. Anything that um, the people of Guam can help you with as well during your research? What the people of Guam can do is share with their members of the state legislature, late state legislature and let them know that recording and capturing this history is very, very important to them and that hopefully there will be some funds to digitize all of this material mm -hmm. so it could be made available to all people, not just to people in Guam, but people on the other islands in the South Pacific, to other universities across the world. You know, we have this incredible tool called the internet. Right. <laughs> okay, let's digitize this stuff, let's throw it up on the net and let everyone know what an incredible place this is and what an incredible resource you have here on the island of Guam. Okay, uh, anything else you'd like to add before we close out? Thank you so much for letting me. I, I, tr I truly feel so welcome in on this island. I don't want to leave. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks again for visiting and for Thank the work you. that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Samantha. It's a pleasure. Okay.